Welcome to the round 10 review for Supercoach 2023. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. And man, did we need a week like this. Um, we scored 2,728 and we're into rank 2,357 after being 7,000 and 10,000 and 20,000, 30,000 in the past few weeks. So yeah, it's good to look at a rank that's um, not terrible. It's uh, It could be better, but man, it was pretty painful putting all this time and having this shitty rank, but... I made some good ground this week. Um, yeah, scored 2,150 last week, and we've scored nearly 600 more this week. I, I can't figure it out, but yeah, just enormous week for a lot of our premiums and the old strategy of um, getting in discounted premiums in um, or the discounted proven premiums in the right age bracket, um, getting those guys in. So Andy Brayshaw, Steele, Zach Merritt, Jack Sinclair, all massive for us because not only are they cheaper, but they also um, revert to their mean. So, and you know, score above their price. So, just enormous for us. And yeah, it's been um, yeah, been a good week to enjoy Supercoach because this week I usually listen to four or five podcasts a week um, in Supercoach and Fantasy. And this week I got through half of one. And I was like, nah, I just had a bad week last week. But yeah, things can turn, and it's been one of those years where. I think the story of the year, I reckon, just the rookies, it's the difference between a good and bad rookie has been astronomical. Like, not correcting Chesser to Chandler has been a disaster. But now that, like, Chesser and Ryan, um, not Chesser, Chandler and Ryan, I didn't have either. It was just very hard to watch, not having those guys, all the money, all the points on field. And then we've got this new wave come in of Atkins, Humphrey, and Weddle. We hit two of the three. We brought in Weddle this week. If we didn't bring in Weddle, oh, oh my goodness, it just we went Weddle over Sharp, and then it's just been like, how can one trade shift so dramatically of like what your team looks like and scores? So yeah, it's it's been really tough. Like if you went early on jury, like I went, I've got Sam Sturt, Roberts, Johnson got suspended, he sub, so he's like, is he actually going to start? The the difference between the good and bad rooks has just been astronomical, and you know I think last year was the mid prices, like your your George Hewitt, your your Crips, your Sicily at the start of the year, your Brody, if you didn't have those guys, you were screwed. Whereas I think this year, it's just, you either picked an absolute dud of a rookie or you picked a rookie that went nuts. So it's good to finally get a few decent rookies in, in, in Atkins and Weddle. But we didn't go, we've reversed Humphrey, but we did get Weddle instead. So I can't complain there, but I would be great to have both. But um, yeah, I had a good week. Uh, shout out to Locke in the Discord. Like, I'm stoked with you know, this sort of rank, 2,000 rank, but he, he's ranked one, so well done, Locke. Um, yeah, had a great season. Probably the best player in our Discord now. So uh, yeah, well done, well done, Locke. And I think um, Guigo as well is ranked 20. So hopefully you boys can um, go one further or go go all the way rather. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing very well. So yeah, I'm proud of them. Um. So the team this week, so the trades were, we went, so there was a bunch of things we were considering. On Friday, I actually had Butters in the team, but, you know, I probably had 10 other players during the week I was considering, but I was looking at, so my targets for this week were Merritt, Brayshaw, and Butters in the podcast, and um, all went all went really well. I think you'd be pretty happy with any of them. I think uh, Zach Merritt was kind of an obvious target, given the fixture, the the injuries to Essendon and just like why I've been so high on merit is just the the durability and proven year on year and what he was able to do last year in the back end of the year so was incredible so very happy to own merit uh, we went for Andy Brayshaw and Weddle so yeah we brought in Andy Brayshaw and Weddle we traded out Wilmot and Hopper and um, with Wilmot I knew his role had changed and his role was good now uh, he's playing down back getting kick in so with Rich out of the team, he was a not a smart trade in, but not a smart trade out. But we had to get rid of somebody, and we just had enough money for Brayshaw and Weddle. Um, and yeah, Brayshaw. What did Brayshaw make? He would have made I think thirty k or something, twenty six k this week. So I think probably Wilmot made similar. Um, but yeah, I, I was happy with Brayshaw. I was just watching him the past few weeks. He's been really really good. A tight knit group of inside mids at Frio. Um, the strong, strong is a better pick, I think. But Andy Brayshaw, five thirty k. That's our that's our price range um, at the moment. So good to get away with some discounted premiums. Um, but yeah, Sunday 
the Saints boys went nuts, which was fantastic for us. We captained Marshall as well. Speaking to Eno, we didn't have a captain. We skipped. We I think we VC'd Gordon or something. And I was trying to like nudge him to captain Marshall with me, just to um, you know, if it goes wrong, I'll go down together, sort of thing. So, but it worked out okay. Marshall captain. And that's the last time I do like skip Bont Clary for captains or something stupid like that. So yeah, that's pretty annoying. But um, took it off Merritt as well. But yeah, all these scenarios that. I had you had to land some you're gonna hit some you're gonna miss so that's all right um, but yeah we'll get into the review um, oh, the big news out of this week probably Clayton Oliver hamstring not sure on the timeline it sounds like there is damage to it but they said up to a month maybe so round 11 is this week 12 so that's two weeks round 13 everyone will have enough premiums I think so missing him in round 13 won't matter too much then round 14 he has the buy so I think he misses a month of football. Oh no, he might be back round 13, but it doesn't really matter because of the buy round. So um, I'll be trading, I think. I, I, like to finish a team, I, I think I need to cash him in and make some money off, off him basically. So yeah, annoying if you just traded him in because you've probably been waiting for him to, to drop in price. He bottomed out 650. Now he's injured, so... Um, we'll, we'll see at the timeline on him and whether he's a hold or not, but I would like to trade. I think my team personally needs to trade him. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So, uh, your yeah, defense. So, Dawson, a uh, little bit lackluster the past few. I think Bulldogs, Ballarat, just horrible. Um, Dawson likes big ground, open space. Get on the outside, hit targets inside 50. No Taylor Walker. Fogarty's out of form. Uh, where are they playing this week? Or we, rather. Uh, Brisbane, uh, Adelaide Oval. At least it's Adelaide Oval, but that's a tough game. Um, yeah, he should be better this week. But um, yeah, just a rough game for the Crows. This was actually the first time I switched off at halftime. I know J JD jokes about Essendon switching off at halftime. Who are looking good, actually, just have injuries. But yeah, I switched off at halftime. I watched the other game, whoever was on. So... Yeah, just an absolutely terrible game from the Crows, but um, still very happy with the progress they've made this year, given where, where we were basically a few years ago. And Nick Dacos, 100. I did not watch this game, Carlton Collingwood. Um, yeah, just sick of watching Carlton games. Just not interested at the moment. No Carlton plays in the team, so I just don't care. Um, but love watching Collingwood, but yeah, Dacos, 100. Whatever, take it. Sinclair, 160. Just incredible game. Intercepts, goals. Hitting targets inside 50. I was slightly worried about him last week. Um, just like the role is not what it used to be. Using Wanganin Miller a lot. But I think this game was... When the game is close the whole way out, I think the plays that get more points, um, you know, generally like your premiums that um, will end up scoring more on the day. So Sinclair, Sicil um, not Sin um, Sinclair, um, Steele, uh, Marshall, just, you know, when the game's close, they score the most, they get the most scaling, basically. So that was pretty kind. So very, very good game from Sinclair. He was tracking to be sub 500, and he just dropped this score. Only went up 9K, so he beat his break even. And 83. So I think you can get him in, or you wait. I think you can wait a week. He'll go up in price a bit. So moving on to the Hawthorne boys. Uh, Day, Mitchell, and Weddle. Well, who is the rookie here? Honestly, I can't tell. So... Yeah, Seamus, is, his role is fantastic. He looks for the ball. Even Weddle. Weddle was unreal. He looks for the ball. He calls for it. Uh, he can intercept. I think he dropped a few marks. Kicked, <laughs> kicked two goals in the first quarter. I just couldn't believe it. Just felt good to own a... Get a lucky score, really. But, um, yeah, played so well. But, yeah, he's um, always looking for space. He's getting confidence every week. And you can see he's just now he's starting to do his thing. And, yeah, he's got... I think he's got GF's role, so... Pretty glorious rollback there. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to keep fielding him at negative 47 break evens. He's going to make a stack of money. So paying 160 for him over Sharp, just enormous. Um, yeah, I can't believe how that played out. So yeah, anyway. Um, and Day, is Day, Day got tagged. I think the issue with Day is average down to 93 now. What's his last five? 90, last three, 82. So it's been a failed trade-in. 
just played West Coast. That was his opportunity to go nuts. Um, I think he's a trade at his buy if he can, because he's not a top six. And we have all these great forwards. Like I don't have Butters here. I think Cogs is better than Day, and just more proven. Um, I don't have Stewart here, so you could throw Stewart in there. But um, yeah, I think we're stuck with him. Uh, we'll see how we go for for money. Depends how much Mitchell and Weddle make, but. Could actually trade him this week to Tom Stewart, but um, he was tagged this week. I think he'll back him in, but I need him for the first buy anyway. But yeah, if I had more trades, more money, he would be gone for Stewart. But yeah, is what it is. Bond 112 it was pretty quiet, so um, must have had a good second half. Actually, I think it was actually all right in the first half, but didn't feel like it was his biggest game. Um, Oliver injured hamstring, so that's interesting. We'll... Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Laird, very good. So Laird is still an uber premium. Um, he's just been subbed basically three weeks in a row. Or had mani subbed or managed game time in the fourth three weeks in a row. Plays a full game, scores 140. And that's that's Laird. So 600k for Laird is a joke. So you got to... I would be... He'd be my number one target this week. Well, I think he's probably number two actually. He'll get to my number one target. Green just gets it done every week, and Merritt, man, I love owning Zach Merritt again. I've had him in my team for basically every year except last year, and um, yeah, it's just stuck in my mind since then how good he is. So, oh, the funny comments from Brad Scott in the press conference. He said, um, "I didn't really, I didn't realize how good of a player Zach Merritt was, which you know played him half forward last week in the fourth quarter, and yeah, he dropped in price, and people got him pretty cheap, but." They might have Xavier O'Neill this week, so see how he goes. Uh, Andy Brayshaw, 134. Andy's always going to be a slightly nervous own because he's he's better for fantasy than super coach. So like he'll have games where well, his ratio was one to one last year, but this year it's been quite poor. So like he's doing a hundred now. I think he's about 112 in in fantasy. So his fixture's actually quite good. So Melbourne's a good. Fixture, we saw the Port Mids like Rosy Butters, like Wines, Horn Francis. They scored like 550, 600 points between them, just about. Well, maybe, sorry, maybe closer to 550, but yeah, they all went berserk on them. No Oliver as well. MCG Brayshaw scored 140 on, on Melbourne last year. And then after that, here's the buy. And then he's got three games at Optus. So I sent out a tweet last week about Andy Brayshaw because I think a lot of people were like, nah, probably don't want Andy, which is fair enough. There's I think there's better out there. Like you got Sarong and Petrarca, who I don't have. Um, probably rather those two over Brayshaw, but Brayshaw was a 110 last year. Um, so no reason why fully fit, he can't do something similar to that. Now it's time on ground the last three. So wait, my tweet was saying, um, well, from this week, he had eight of the last 14 at Optus, so now seven of the last 13 at Optus. So still okay. Um, yeah, three, three at Optus after his buy. And his time on ground the last three was 85, which is higher than last year. But this this game, it was 70. So I don't know. So at 570K, uh, I'd probably just go for a, like a sarong if you can afford it. It's not much more, but for 530 odd or 540, whatever he was, I was, I was happy with that. And yeah, Jack Steele, like almost like penciled him in for like 105 to be disappointed every week, but... Yeah, he played really well. Um, cracks in, tackles non-stop, sore knee, metal shoulder, just still got it done. Rory Atkins as well, been massive trade-in for us. So 102, so we take that. Roll was fantastic. It's funny watching him because whenever they get the ball or whenever, they, whenever Gold Coast control the ball, Atkins is almost certainly trying to get a cheap sideways kick. So um, yeah, he was fantastic. Um, good efficiency. I think his efficiency has always been good. It's just since he entered the team, he's had a few errors. Like at the Crows, his efficiency was good. He was a good ball user. Um, just had some unlucky clangers and like scaling got him. Like he didn't score when the games were close or uh, had some like hat kicks forward in the dying stages of games, which you get clangers. He got marked down really poorly for. So it all kind of came together for him this uh, this round. Sam Simpson 20, so disappointing. He's he hasn't been I boosted to get Simpson because I was, I was worried about my cash gen and he's made about 
made 84k so that's rubbish um better than a lot of others but that's not good enough i think i'll hold him for two weeks i need him in the first buy and just we got gmhba stadium and then bulldogs at marvel so one good matchup but we need to field him for round 12 if he's still in the team but yeah, he was also subbed off mj was good hopefully he plays yeah 37 in a sub game uh, what's his break even 21 so if he plays i'd almost be happy to field him so i think he's yeah, he looks pretty good out there captain rowan good english good so i think yeah these two and darcy they're the probably probably the three ruckmen and with max gorn i don't think he's top top six sorry he's not top two ruck and he's not a top six forward um given his ruck time but um yeah i don't think i don't see him outscoring any of these guys maybe she's in this new role i'm not sure we'll see if he slows down but i don't see him outscoring these four here um but yeah the forwards yeah dunk's very good Toronto very good uh Z 88 that's fine slow fourth quarter or slow second half quarter 96 we take vc him a silly vc like i guess but that's all right um rosie 140 outstanding and then yeah Sheasel's new role he should have been a 130 because he missed a missed a clutch goal at the end um in front of yeah in the late in the fourth so um the new role was a bit concerning so i think uh we've got three upgrades to go 13 trades so it's pretty tight um day's not a top six and she's who i don't think will be top six with this new role but he's a, they want him around the ball and he like he gets cbas um rolls up pretty high um it's not going to keep two two i have three shots on goal every game so with sheasel i think you just if even if he drops a bit of money you hold him to his buy and then you assess then i think i'll probably end up i'll definitely end up keeping one of day or sheasel and most likely i'll need to keep both um but yeah, and then yeah our bench is still a disaster like robert's injured i think we'll just keep roberts for the year he's got dpp so i think that's going to help prez like sturt might come back i haven't checked his vfl game or waffle game but has been okay in the waffle and i think he will come back if they get an injury but other than that uh, i'm not too certain but it would be a nice surprise if he came back into the team and roberts might be like our cover player if he comes back after after the buy or something so for the last eight weeks or whatever now trades this week we can't upgrade no chance and we're not going to upgrade next week because it's pretty pointless when um everyone's going to have a buy uh, so next week will be downgrade week i think we'll probably look at ford and wardlaw next week um humphrey is gone for us i think 280 290 uh how much is he i think he's 290 this is such an annoying fade because this is like because of his buy and his on-field scoring and how much money he's going to make this is a horrific miss he made 70k oh my god 117 101 oh my god yeah it's still negative 54 break even so can you trade him in if you look at his projected so if he goes 65s he will only get to like 350k he's got two games up in darwin tough game against the dogs i think crows is a tough game i'm not sure but i think crows are like eighth to tenth range this year um he looks really good and i think the way he plays can hold up against good teams because um he just cracks in all the time um contested player in and under and seems to find the ball when he like drifts forward as well so yeah i think he's um i think it's too late like what is he if he does what are you expecting to average like 80 80 to 85 from here maybe um clearly has a, a ceiling to do better than that but yeah he looked fantastic so uh bad miss is what it is uh i can't I'm not really in a position to grab him if i was i'd probably actually get him just because of the points during the play rounds but um not much we can do about that now trades this week um well the rookies this week we've got had a fleet and go i thought he did some okay things but uh negative 20 break even 44 
245s basically. Fahey is getting 160 points a game. Well, he scored 160 in the in the VFL, Fahey. So I don't know if they want to take his spot or not. Um, I think there's a spot there for when, for because Cumming is out for the next five weeks or so. I don't know if he holds or not. I would love to be enlightened to know. But I think I'll skip him because I'm not sure because we've got Ford and Wardlaw. And I imagine they, like Wardlaw has to play. He's like their... Him and Shizu are their, their big hopes. And um, Ford scored 100, and he looks pretty good out there. So I think he was like wing half forward sort of role. Um, probably have to watch the tape on him next week, but I'm not going to bother this week. So there's nothing we can really do. Oh, yeah, there's uh, Wardlaw, Ford, Fleeton. So I think I'll skip Fleeton. Wardlaw and Ford. We've got three trades next week, so I'll grab both next week. You could go early on Wardlaw. He's had horrific hamstring issues, so that does worry me, but they've been building him up for months now, so he might be okay. Um, Copped a bad head knock, so even though his time on ground was pretty low, I think that was also affected by a head knock that he got. Someone basically tried to run through him. So, um, yeah, I'll look at those two next week, and then, yeah, probably skip Fleeton. The other one's Mick Andrew. So comments were made in John Longmire's presser where he said, uh, McAndrew, is it McAndrew? Lachlan McAndrew. He's like the backup ruckman for Sydney. So he was basically saying that they're going to need him with Laddams going down and Hickey's had concussion issues. So I think they used McLean more in the ruck and McLean did okay in the ruck. So I think they'll use him there. Um, I don't know. I think McAndrew, you look at not this week, not next week. Sorry, this week he plays his second game. Then he's got his bye. You look at him around 13. I think I'll do that. Um, but if you need an, an upgrade, a downgrade this week, I'd probably go to Eddie Ford because of his base price. Um, but yeah, we'll look at... Or if you can... Just, or you could go Wardlord, but because um, Wardlord is like 100% chance to hold. I think Ford holds. I'd need to do a bit of research on that. But, you know, if you a kid that plays well, you can't possibly drop... So anyway, trades for this week. We're getting rid of Oliver, and we are getting. Now I haven't even looked at the other options, but we might as well look any. Might as well look anyway. Um, LeBron James Sicily plays fifty break even and plays Saint Kilda, who give up two defenders. I'm not even going to think twice, and that's a VC for me as well. So. Uh, okay, Day can go in the midfield. So with this, it means I don't think we ever get Clary back. I, I don't think we can upgrade. We're not going to be finished. I don't think our team will be finished on the last buy round. It might be the week after or even the week after that. Um, hopefully Chincotta comes back. That would be pretty exciting if he did. Um, so we'll line up like this, I think, this week. So I'm more than happy to field Mitchell and Weddle on what I saw. Not expecting 110s from Weddle. Still expecting like 60. But the way he plays and his role is very good. And he put up some good VFL numbers before he entered the AFL. Um, so Atkins, Mitchell and Weddle, I think you could do worse. I think um, ideally I'd have another premium here, but um, can't win them all. So I'm going to VC Sicily against um, the Saints. Yeah, what's his, I think his break even was 50. Yeah, I love Sicily. Owning him was so fun last year. So there's also comments on Sicily about he made that his role has changed. He's not playing key position anymore, um, which was it was very obvious that he was getting so frustrated playing key position. And that's he's never he was never that under Clarkson and under um, under Sam Mitchell. He had to do that occasionally, but at least this time they'll, they'll play blank. I think so. Blank and Frost, although I think Frost got sus might be suspended, but I don't care, it's against the Saints. So, um, yeah, I love to own Sicily. So that's my path to Sicily. Otherwise, I can never get him. Oliver can go, um, unfortunately, but even if it's two weeks, like I'm kind of screwed in that first buy round. So, um, yeah, I've got six premiums out, and uh, that's probably more than everyone. So this is going to be a rough week for us, I think. So two, four... 
So we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, Chester doesn't count. Simpson maybe 17. And then Wardlaw and Ford. So that'll be 19 hopefully. 20 with Chester. So then round 13 will be fine. Round 14. This is not... This is pretty bad. But one of Mitchell or Weta will go. So I think we'll be okay. Um, and hopefully... Johnson plays and should have Ford and Wardlaw still. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hopefully, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ford, Wardlaw, and we get we'll get rid of one of these. So that's gonna be pretty tight. We might not even be able to field a full team. Um yeah, that's pretty not great, but we could go Stewart over Sicily more points during this buy but hell no I like Sicily way more so I'm just gonna I'll just death ride Stuart I think just cause I want to and then this last buy is a bit laggy um actually not too bad so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 oh it's actually pretty bad um We'll worry about that when we'll cross that bridge when it comes. So, um, so I think the plan will be uh, should be on eight trades left with two upgrades, and we'll have Atkins. Say we'll have Atkins, Weddle, um, Wardlaw, Ford, and Johnson. We'll need to turn those five players into premiums, and then we'll have the team finished with Sheasel and Day on three trades left. So not really finished, but. Um, that's just where we're at so yeah those three injury trades but we'll see how we go um, I don't really want Gorn I'd love McAndrew to hold for the year and he can be our rookie cover but um, not sure it depends on the timeline of their rucks but hopefully McAndrew has a big game this week and cements his spot if Laddams is out long term but yeah because I do want ruck cover um, but yeah that's it from me thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one